without ceasing nirantara prarthana kare as a church we have raised prayer in these days and we would like to specifically pray for you if you have a personal prayer request agar aap mein se kisi ko vyaktigat taur pe prarthana ki zarurat hai to hum aapke sath prarthana karna chahte hain you can see in the description box a link given or in the live chats the same link is available where you can just click on that put your name and number and your prayer request and click on the submit button and the prayer request will be made available to us aap us description box mein ya live chat mein ek link aap aapko mil jayega us link ko daba ke click kijiyega aur us form ko aap fill up kar dijiyega aapka naam number aur prarthna ka jo request hai आप उसमें भर दीजिएगा और सबमिट बटन दबा दीजिएगा ये प्रार्थना का जो रिक्वेस्ट है हमारे पास आ जाएगा और हम में से कोई आपको कॉल करेंगे और आपके साथ प्रार्थना में टाइम स्पेंड करेंगे वन ऑफ अस फ्रॉम आर चर्च फ्रॉम माय लीडर्स विल कॉल यू एंड विल बी विथ यू इन दिस प्रेयर इन दिस टाइम ऑफ प्रेयर गॉड ब्लेस यू Good morning everyone. I hope you're all doing well. TCFC family meets every morning at 7:30 a.m. and every evening at 7:30 p.m. for an hour of intercession and worship through an app called Zoom. On Tuesdays and on Thursdays we have extended worship sessions. We encourage you all to join with us in this time of prayer. For further information you can contact anyone from TCFC church through WhatsApp or write to us through social media. Hope to see you all.
Pray without ceasing. Nirantar Pratna Kare. As a church, we have raised prayer in these days and we would like to specifically pray for you if you have a personal prayer request. Agar aap me se kisi ko vyaktigat taur pe pratna ki zarurat hai, to hum aapke saath pratna karna chate hai. You can see in the description box a link given or in the live chats, the same link is available where you can just click on that, put your name and number and your prayer request and click on the submit button and the prayer request will be made available to us. Aap us description box mein ya live chat mein ek link aap, aapko mil jayega, us link ko daba ke click kiye jayega aur uh, us form ko aap fill up kar dijega, aapka naam, number aur prathna ka jo request hai, aap us mein bhar dijega aur submit button daba dijega ये प्रार्थना का जो रिक्वेस्ट है हमारे पास आ जाएगा और हम में से कोई आपको कॉल करेंगे और आपके साथ प्रार्थना में टाइम स्पेंड करेंगे वन ऑफ अस फ्रॉम आर चर्च फ्रॉम आर लीडर्स विल कॉल यू एंड विल बी विथ यू इन दिस प्रेयर इन दिस टाइम ऑफ प्रेयर गॉड ब्लेस यू Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing well. TCFC family meets every morning at 7.30 a.m. and every evening at 7.30 p.m. for an hour of intercession and worship through an app called Zoom. On Tuesdays and on Thursdays, we have extended worship sessions. We encourage you all to join with us in this time of prayer. For further information, you can contact anyone from TCFC Church through WhatsApp or write to us through social media.
Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Let us praise God for this new day and thank Him for this precious gift of life that we are alive today and worshiping Him. The times that we live in may not be good for the world, but for those of us who believe in God, everything is normal and good because the Sovereign Lord is in control and He is good all the time. These days, our children are learning from the book of Joshua in Sunday school. And it has been very enriching learning with them the truths in this book. The call of Joshua to leadership starts with an encouragement from the Lord to be strong and courageous. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 7, the Lord tells Joshua, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. When the world talks about courage and strength, it is something to do with bravery, or developing positive attitude, having resilience, and all about promoting oneself. But the call of Joshua to lead and to be strong and courageous is a call to willingly and boldly conduct himself in obedience to God. And this call is today for every one of us, and more so for times such as this. The question we may face is that, how can we be strong when the truth is we are weak? But our strength does not come from within us. Our strength comes from the Lord, from His promise, and that is, I will be with you always. I will be with you wherever you go, Joshua 1.9. And yes, it takes a lot of courage to stand firm in the Word of God. And we also know that to have courage is not the absence of fear. And so we have to always depend on the strength that comes from the Lord. Just as the psalmist says in Psalm 121, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. It is not about our own ability. It is about trusting in his word. And so brothers and sisters, let us put our trust in the strength of the Lord and draw courage and wisdom from the Lord as we come together today, worshiping the Lord. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gift of life, and we thank you for this blessed time of worship. Lord, we pray that we all may find courage and strength from you, even as we are in our homes, but in your presence. And now, Lord, as we sing praises unto you and as we listen to your word, Father, we pray that your spirit will speak to each and every one of us, that we all may be blessed in accordance to your will and your loving mercies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, it's so nice to see each of us gathered to worship our God today. Hallelujah. What a privilege that we have to exist, to give Him glory, and to breathe in and out because He gives us the permission to do so. Hallelujah. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of every breath. 
we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say.
is where realization hits each one of us. Hallelujah. Let's worship our God. Amen. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the Praise be unto the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A very, very blessed morning to all of you. And thank God for that wonderful time of worship that we had focusing on the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever we have received is from him and through him and for him. Let us have this perspective very clearly. It's all because of the cross we are here. Let us exalt Jesus our Lord. And this morning, as we continue to worship our Lord, let us focus on the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we go into the message, I would like to thank all of you who have responded to the survey form. And thank you so much for your honest, genuine responses. But I believe there are many more who are yet to uh, fill that survey form. Today is the last day. 
and please do that by today. It's not just enough that some of you or most of you fill that form, but when all of you fill that form, then it fulfills its purpose. Kindly, kindly do it today. Fill that survey form, go into the TCFC family and click on to that link and it will take about maybe maximum 10 minutes, not even 10 minutes, maybe less than 10 minutes, you can finish that survey form. Thank you so much for taking your time to do it. It'll help us to be better servants, stewards of the kingdom of God. That is why we are doing this survey. May the Lord bless you. This morning, I want to speak to you about defeat discouragement. I'm sure in the last five months or maybe in your life, you have gone through discouragement. I have gone through discouragement. How do we handle? How do we handle discouraging times? What is discouragement? The Cambridge Dictionary defines discouragement like this. The state of having lost your confidence or enthusiasm for something. When a person loses confidence or enthusiasm or the courage, that is when we say we have discouragement. As a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are not just to be drowned in our discouragement, but we have to come out of it, stand strong, trust in the Lord so that we can continue in our journey which the Lord has given to us. In the Bible, we find so many people who have been discouraged. Let us look into few people and find out uh, what they did and or why they were discouraged. I'm not going to details, just going to mention these names and the verses so that at least you know there has been so many, many of you know, but I'm just sharing this for us to know once again there are people who have been discouraged in their life. Moses, for example, in Numbers chapter 11, verse 15, this is what he says, if you will treat me like this, kill me at once. This is what he's saying to God. If I find favor in your sight, that I may not see my wretchedness. He was so discouraged in his life. And he's saying, Lord, if you treat me like this, kill me. He was so discouraged and going to the point of saying, Lord, you now take my life. There's another man of God by the name of Elijah, the prophet Elijah. All of us know about him. First Kings chapter 19, verse 4. This is what he says, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. He's very discouraged. Discouraged to the point of saying to the Lord, God, take my life. I'm no worth living, Lord God. I'm no better than my father's. Take my life. David, this man after God's own heart, he went through a lot of discouragement. Psalms 42 verse 5. You read that, you'll find that he's saying that, Lord, I'm discouraged. I'm distressed in my soul. There's another portion which I want to uh, show to you from 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him. Because of all the people who were bitter in the soul. Each for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. David encouraged himself. What happened? When he came back from the battle. The women and the children. They were all taken away by the enemy. And he was so discouraged. His own wife and children, everyone was taken. And the people got so bitter that we have come along with you to fight against the enemies. Now our families are gone. They planned to stone him. But David was left all alone and he went to the Lord. God, he strengthened himself in the Lord. What am I trying to say? There are so many people in the Bible also we find who went through discouragement. But they did not remain there. They strengthened themselves. They came out of it. And this morning we are going to look into some principles 
by which we also, when we go through discouraging times, we will also come out of it and continue in the journey which God has kept for each one of us. Discouragement comes to all of us. I don't know what you have been discouraged with very recently. If you're listening to me, and if you're serious about today's word and message which the Lord is giving to you, I'm sure that you have a pad and a pen with you or a pencil. And if you do not have, I know some of you are very, very good in remembering these things, but I encourage you to write down. Write down in your pad what all things that you have been discouraged very recently, at least in the last five, six months. Is it finances, health, relationships, job, children, their future? Or somebody who passed away, a friend, a dear one, or somebody who faced with some tragedy, somebody whom you knew very well? What has discouraged you? And list all those things. I have been discouraged with these things. We will talk about it, not about those issues. But we are going to tell you, I'm going to share with you from the word of God how we can come out of that discouraging moments of life. If you are still drowned in that, this morning through the word of God, this is my prayer unto the Lord that through this word that you will have the courage, boldness to go into the presence of the Lord and come out. You will allow the Lord to bring you out of that discouraging situation that you are going through. Let's look to one person's life in the New Testament who went through unimaginable discouraging moments and very, very bad moments of his life. I'm sure you know about the person that I'm talking about. And this is about Paul, Apostle Paul. He has listed some situations that he has gone through. Let us read and understand few things about his situation, first of all. And this we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verses 23 to 28. If you have the Bible, please take this passage, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 28. And I will read it for you. Are they servants of Christ? I'm better one. By the way, people were accusing him. They were saying that he is not the true apostle. And they were throwing a lot of allegations upon him. He's not really defending, but he's saying that this is what I have gone through in life. And what is he saying? Are they the servants of Christ? I am better one. I am talking like a madman with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at the sea. On frequent journeys in the danger of rivers, danger of robbers, danger of my own people, danger of Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers. In toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. And apart from all these things, there is a daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. After reading this, I want to ask you the question. Do you have a problem? Are you going through some situation after listening to all these things? Are you really discouraged? See, this man went through all these issues in life. Five times beaten up by the Jews. 39 lashes. For what? For the gospel. Three times beaten up by the rots. Shipwrecked. Alone in the sea. And in his journeys, so many times he faced danger from robbers, from people, from enemies, from friends. From his own people from Gentiles, from churches. 
He went through all these things. Even sleepless nights without food and water in hunger many times for the gospel. Exposed to all kinds of attacks of the enemy. But he went through all these things. I'm not saying that he was not discouraged, but I'm saying that he did not remain there. He came out of it, continued his journey, and allowed the Lord to fulfill the mission which God had for his life. How can we do that? God has a mission for you. God has a purpose for your life. And he always is so desirous to see his purposes fulfilled in your life. Here on the earth. Not your purpose. God is so desirous to see his purpose fulfilled in your life. But if we remain in our discouragement. We will not allow God. To fulfill his purpose through us. Let us look into Paul's life. And to learn how to defeat discouragement. Let us turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and I'm reading, uh, I'm not reading the whole chapter, but we will take some principles out of it. There are a few things that we have to remember. When we forget these truths, that's when we go into discouragement. We got to remind ourselves about these truths again and again, remembering not only what God has done, but also the truths of this word of God is very important for us to remember. So, I'm going to talk about five things for us to remember, which Paul talks about. There are more things, but I'm only taking only five things because of the lack of time. Just five things for you to remember. Verse 1 of chapter 4, 2 Corinthians. What do we read? Verse 1. Here, this is what we read in Amplified. Therefore, since we have this ministry, just as we receive mercy from God granting us salvation, opportunity and blessings, we do not get discouraged nor lose our motivation. This is the amplified version. The first point is remember the mercies of God in your life. When we go through discouraging moments, this is what Paul is saying. He's saying, therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God. He's remembering God's mercy upon his life when he is going through discouraging moments. Discouragement will come. But what are you supposed to be doing? Remember the mercy of God in our life. Helen Keller, this woman, uh, says that, I cried for shoes until I saw a man without feet. She's saying I was crying out for shoes until I saw a man without feet. Life is full of blessings in our life. There are so many good things and privileges that the Lord has given to us. And sometimes we are so blinded to all these things. Especially when discouragement comes into our life. We get so blinded. By the way, the same chapter talks about who is blinded. Chapter 4 verse 4, the verse 4. Who is blinded? The enemy of this world has blinded the eyes of the unbelievers to the gospel, to the mercies of the Lord. I'm sure you are not one of those. When do we get blinded to the gospel, to these precious privileges that the Lord has given to us, to the mercies of the Lord? Another thing that you can list down is list down the mercies of the Lord that he has shown upon your life. And you can remember one by one is what a great mercy that God has shown upon me. What a great privilege God has given to me. This is what Paul is saying. That I'm going through all these situations in life, but I remember the great mercy of the Lord that is shown upon me. That he has saved me. This wretched man, he gave me the salvation, not only the salvation, but he called me to take this gospel now to the ends of the earth. What a great mercy of the Lord. I don't deserve it. Our life is full of God's great mercies and blessings. Do you know who are the people 
who don't remember the mercies of the Lord, especially in times of discouragement. The people who have a sense of entitlement. And they tend to get discouraged because they feel that they are entitled for these privileges, entitled for some things in their life. And when they don't get it, they get so discouraged. God gives us what we need and not what we deserve. If God was going to give us what we deserved, what do you think we deserved? We deserved eternal damnation, eternal separation from God, judgment upon us. That's what we really deserved. A sense of entitlement robs all the joy, blinds our eyes to the mercies of the Lord, blinds our eyes to the gospel, to the great work that Jesus finished for us on the cross. The mercies of the Lord are new every morning. The faithfulness of God is so great. If you and I have to see the new mercies every day that comes up with the new dawn, then we have to look to him. We have to throw away this sense of entitlement. Go to him humbly. Lord, open my eyes to see the new mercies that are coming with every dawn. Where can you really see the mercy of the Lord? At the cross. As we were singing, at the cross, at the cross. That's where we find mercy. God did not give us what we deserve, but he showed mercy upon us. Mercy is withdrawing what we deserved and grace is giving what we didn't deserve. Cross is the place. When we lose the sight of the cross, that's when we get discouraged. This morning I want you to remember the mercies of the Lord. That's the first thing. Remember the mercy of God. Secondly, in verse 2, let me read that in NLT, New Living Translation. We reject all shameful deeds, underhanded methods. We don't try to trick anyone or distort the word of God. We tell the truth before God and all who are honest know this. What is Paul saying? The second point is remember who you are. Remember who you are. Don't try to fake in life. Just be who you are. Don't try to duplicate others. Just be who you are. Nothing can be so discouraging when you try to be somebody or something which you are not created to be. But nothing can be contend. The greatest contentment of your life is when you are what you are created to be by God. You will have the greatest peace, greatest joy, greatest contentment in your life when you are striving to be what God has uniquely created you to be. Don't try to fake in life. Each one of us has a race to run, has a battle to fight, has a journey to finish. Every one of our experiences are different. Our journeys are different. Our timetables are different. Our callings are different. We are all unique in the presence of the Lord. We are uniquely made by God. We are tailor-made by God. And we have to be what God has made us to be. We don't have to copy others. We have to be just what we are. We have to be the originals, not the photocopies. Many people start as originals. But sadly, they end up as carbon copies. No, God doesn't want us to be carbon copies. In the kingdom of God, there are only originals. Everyone is uniquely created by God. You got to know that. When you try to be somebody, that's when discouragement, stress, and so much of pain comes into your heart. Because you can never be what others are you can be very easily what you are created to be. There are so many sad stories which are happening among us because of the pressure that they want to be somebody. 
And when they are not able to become that somebody, which they have in their mind, in their imagination, or maybe they are pressured by somebody, the society or the community where they are living, that you have to become someone like this, they are under heavy, heavy pressure. Young and old, middle-aged, and many of them are going through this discouraging times because they are there is a demand upon them to perform and to be someone whom they are not or whom they cannot be. God knew what he was doing when he made you. He has custom designed you with a unique personality, unique temperament, unique talent, background, experiences, so that you may fulfill the purpose which God has for your life, the mission which the Lord has for your life. And so what are you supposed to be doing? You must harness all these things to fulfill that which God has purpose for you, rather than just trying to copy what others are doing, rather than to become what others are like. No, you don't have to be. When you know that this is what God has designed you to be, you will be very much content. It's not about what you do. It's not about how much influence you're making. It's not about how big things and popular you are. God is not going to ask me why I am not like my younger sister, who is very popular, who's known by all. God is not going to ask me why you are not like that. Rather, people are so worried and so much. They ask me why you are not like your sister. God is not going to ask me why you are not like your father who was a great administrator, great preacher, great leader. Why you are not like him? Why you don't achieve things like him? God is not going to ask me. I'm sure about that. People may be worried about it. I am not. Why? Because I know this is what God has created me to be. Because when I grow in communion and relationship with the Lord on a day-to-day -day basis, when I listen to him, I know what he's speaking to me. I don't have to have a wrong script in my mind, in my heart. You know, it is good to observe others' life, learn about others, and get encouraged and inspired by others' life, read about others' story. It's very good. But when you begin to copy others, compare with others, covet what others have, and compete with others, then we will be stressed, discouraged, so much pain in our heart, because sometimes we don't match with others. And all the life we will be stressed up, discouraged, because then we are so jealous in our heart, bitter, negative. Learn from others. Observe others' life. Hear their testimonies. Read the biographies. Be inspired from them. But don't never become, never become what others are. Become what God has made you to be. Remember who you are. Paul is saying, we don't want to be somebody else. We have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. Every false ways and fake things. We refuse to practice cunning or tamper God's word. We are very honest. We are very transparent. We are very genuine. God blesses, not fakes and phonies. God blesses authentic, transparent, genuine people. Please understand this. He doesn't like fakes and phonies. When Jesus was on the earth, he he was so angry at the hypocrites. You know that. What all he says against those hypocrites. He was so angry at them. But those genuine, honest, sincere, transparent, authentic people, he sought after them. He served them. He gave his life as a ransom for those people. Don't be a fake. Remember who you are. And just be who you are. Let us read verse 5 and go to the point number 3. 
The verse 5 in NLT we read like this. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord and we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. The third point, remember, it's not about you. Paul is saying, we don't preach about ourselves. We preach Jesus Christ because he is the focus of our life. Every time you focus on you, you are prone to get discouraged because you are not the center of the universe. God has not created you to be at the center of the universe and everything revolve around you. That's not how God has created you. So don't even expect and have dreams and imaginations like that, that you have to be the focus and attraction and the center of everything. When you think likewise, you will tend to get discouraged and your feelings are so hurt within you. Because why? Because your desires are not satisfied. When sin came into this world, you know what happened? That a wrong script also came into our heart. What is the wrong script? The wrong script is that I want to be popular. I want to be satisfied in life. I want to be attractive. I want to be better than others. I must be on the top. It's all about me. This is what sin does. But when we are redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a new script that the Holy Spirit writes into our heart. What is a new script like? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that all other things shall be added unto you. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and with thanksgiving to God the Father through Jesus Christ. Whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, everything that you do, do it for the glory of God. If any man boast on anything, let him boast on this thing. On what? That he knows the Lord. And it is the Lord who exercises justice, kindness, and righteousness on the earth. This is a new script. Or like Paul says that when he went to the Corinth church, he said, I resolve to know nothing among you except Christ and him being crucified. It is for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's the new script that comes into our heart when we are redeemed with the precious blood of the Lord. And it is this script that will be guiding us. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's everything is about Jesus Christ. It's no more I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's the new script. It's not about my satisfaction. It's not about my joy. It's not about my pleasure. It's not about what my status of life is. It's about Jesus Christ. When we have this thought, there's no reason for us to be discouraged in life. That's what Paul is saying. We don't preach ourselves. We preach Jesus Christ. But this is very countercultural. The world is saying it's about you. You have to take care of your life. You have to strive. You have to be on the, on the forefront. You have to compete with others. You have to do this and do that. Yes, you have to do that. But as far as a disciple is concerned, we do. We do with the strength of the Lord. We do with the power that is residing within us. Because we believe that he's able to do much more than we can ask or imagine. According to the power that is at work within us, he's able to do. Paul says that I strive with his strength. And that's what we believe. We strive, but with his strength. It's not about me, it's about Jesus Christ. Remember, it's about Jesus. It's not about me. Jesus is the motivation for everything in our life. Jesus is the motivation for life. If Jesus is the motivation for life, there's no reason why we will be discouraged. Let's go to the fourth point and I will read from 
verses 8 to 12 and 15 of chapter 4, 2 Corinthians. Verses 8 onwards. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Verse 15. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. The fourth point. Remember, your pain is to bless others. Paul is saying that we have gone through affliction, but we are not crushed. We've gone through perplexity, but it has not driven us for despair. We've gone through persecution, but we are not forsaken. We have been struck down, but not destroyed. We've gone through all situations of life, but we know one thing, all these situations of life, it is to bless others. We carry the death of Christ in our body, in this mortal flesh, but it is life for others. Verse 15, he says that, that it is for your sake that all these things. Wow, what a perspective. He says that all my pains that I've gone through, it is to bless somebody. Even today, after 2,000 years, going through the experiences of Paul, Apostle Paul, it is such a great encouragement for us to know that even through all these things that we read earlier in chapter 11, that he stood strong and he said, his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. My friends, the pains of your life, the discouraging things that you are going through, it is not to destroy you, it is actually to shape you and to manifest his life through you so that others are blessed through your life. Your sickness that you're going through is for the glory of God. See, that is what Jesus said to Lazarus. This sickness is not for death, but to glorify the name of God. The blind man, this is not because of his parents or his father or his sin, but this is for the glory of the Lord. How? Somebody is going to be blessed through it. Let's have this perspective. Your situation, your struggles and trials that you're going through right now today, it is not to destroy you. When you go through pain, and if you know that there is a purpose of God in this pain, then you will endure it. You will know this pain is for a purpose. That understanding, if you have, you will go through it and you may never know what is the purpose of the Lord. What has God achieved through it? We don't have to re really know about it. But we know that every pain, every struggle, every trial, every situation that you're going through today, right now, it is for a purpose. It is definitely to glorify his name, but also it is definitely to bless somebody. That's the purpose of God. In Hebrews chapter 12, we read that Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He knew this pain, this trial that he is going through, this situation that he is going through, it is for a purpose. What was the purpose? He wants to see in the eternity sons and daughters who are living with him. He wants to enjoy the fellowship of sons and daughters for eternity. When he thought about that, he endured the cross. We may never know completely why God is allowing those pains. But you must definitely know that there is a purpose. And when you realize that, you will endure through it. That's what Paul is saying 
over here. This is for your benefit. We carry the death of the Lord in our body, but it is life for you. Praise God. When we face resistance, opposition, trials, pains, challenges in our life, or when things are not coming through as we want, or when prayers are not answered, it is natural some of us can go through discouragement. But I want to encourage you this morning. As you go through all these experiences in life, maybe a prayer unanswered, maybe something has not come through as you want it to be. Right now, you may be going through some very, very painful situation with regard to your family, with your children, or something with regard to your job or some situation. But I want to tell you, as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no situation that you and I go through without purpose. God knows it. Job went through that suffering for a purpose. To glorify his name, to be a testimony for us even today, after so many years, even 4,000 years, he's still a blessing, a great testimony for us. We go through situations in life to be a blessing for others. Remember, your pain is to bless others. Let's go to the last one, which is in verses 17 and 18. Let us read that, verses 17 and 18. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. And we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. The last point, fifth point. Remember to focus on eternity. We looked at five things. This is the fifth point. Remember God's mercies. Remember who you are. Remember it's not about you, it's about Jesus. Remember, your pain is to bless others. Final one. Remember, your focus is on eternity. That's what Paul is saying over here. We are going through light and momentary afflictions. It is light and momentary afflictions preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Oh, He's saying, I'm being prepared for that eternal glory. I cannot even compare with any of those things which I'm going through. That is so, so great and awesome. You know, we have to live life like this. We have to live life backwards from eternity. Not from here to eternity. Yes, we are physically going through like this, but spiritually, that should be our perspective. What a great perspective is this, that we live life backward from eternity. I compare with that glorious eternity, nothing can be compared to that which I'm going through over here. This is nothing. A future, an eternal perspective. You know, there are three motivations for life. One is internal and external and eternal. What is internal? Internal is the motivation that I want to be a good person. I want to be a man of good character. I want to be a person of worth. I want to be, you know, good in my heart, good conscience, great soul. Nothing wrong in that. If that is just our motivation, it's not enough. Ex external motivation. What is the external motivation? I want a great house. I want a great family. I want a good job, good money, good name, good reputation. These are all called external motivation. And if this is what is motivating to live a life, not very great. But the real motivation that we must have is eternal. Not just internal, not just external, but an eternal perspective. This is what Paul is talking about. What is an eternal perspective? What I'm going through is momentary and light afflictions compared to that glorious eternity 
that I have in Christ Jesus. And nothing can be compared to that. That is what is motivating. Focus on eternity. We will never be discouraged. You look around you. We will be always discouraged. Because we are living in a messed up world. Discouraging world. With so many people whose lives are so much of messed up and discouraging. We will definitely get discouraged. But we must have a right perspective for us to overcome all these situations in life. Kuri Ten Boon, this is what she says. When you look within, you will be depressed. When you look around, you will be distressed. When you look above to Christ, you will be at rest. When you have that eternal perspective. No matter what you are going through. And you know the story of Kuri Ten Boon. Who has gone through this holocaust of Jews. And how she was encouraging to so many people. Are you going through discouragement today? In this season. Especially during the last five months. Have you faced discouragement? And are you still Drowned in that discouragement? This morning I want to tell you. Remind you about these five things from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Remember God's mercies. Remember how much merciful he has been to you. Look to the cross and see the beautiful picture of the mercy that was shown upon each one of us. That he did not give us what we really deserved. He gave us what we really need. And that's his love and salvation. Second, remember who you are. Do not fake. Don't be a phony, a hypocrite. Be an authentic person. Be who you are. God created you to be. God created you. In a very special way. In a very unique way. Strive to be what God created you to be. Be, remember who you are. Third one. Remember, it's not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. The world is not revolving around you. It's not just about your joy and satisfaction. It's about his pleasure. It's not about your pleasure. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. Remember your pain is to bless others. Your sorrows is to bring joy to others. Your pain is to bring peace into the life of others. Your test and trials is a testimony for others. Your mess and your miseries are a message for others. Your pain is to bless others. The fifth one, remember to focus on eternity. Live life backwards from eternity. Because you are striving there. Because you are what because we are one day going to be there. Let that be our perspective and driving force when we go through all situations of life. My wife's mother went to be with the Lord the last week. Most of you have heard about that. Last year, almost at this time, I lost my mother. And this year, I lost my wife's mother. When I was going through this message, I remember both of them, especially my mother-in-law, who went to be with the Lord the last week. Right from her very, very early age, before even I was a part of that family, she had gone through so many, many trials, painful situations. I think she was the only one in the faith in our family. Her husband was not strong in the faith. And because of that, she has to go through so many challenging situations. In addition to that, he got sick. He was three years sick because of some situation. And she was ministering to him and along with these four little kids she was raising them up in the home 
with all, all little, little situations or resources that they had. It was a series of painful situations of our life. At least when I came to that family, I've seen that it was a series of problems and challenging situations, one after another, and everyone was greater than the previous one. But if you have met her and spent a little time with her, the joy that she had in her heart, that she would remember the mercies of the Lord, and she will say, what a great God she my Lord is. She'll be overflowing with joy. She will know that it is not about me, it is about Jesus Christ. And she will always strive to live what God had called her to be, never try to become what others want her to be. Such a praying woman. And her focus was always on eternity. And she knew very well that her pains is to bless somebody. That's what she was actually always trying to be. When she passed away, her whole community, both believers and unbelievers, more the unbelievers, so much was there to help. We could not go because of the situation. I was remembering her. What a great testimony. So I'm not talking about just Paul who lived 2,000 years before. I'm talking about people who are living even now today among us. And one testimony is my mother-in-law who went to be with the Lord just a few days back. There are so many like that. My friends, don't think that I'm just talking the stories. I'm talking what you could be. Defeat every discouraging situations in your life by remembering these five things. One of the things which I will encourage you is that don't try to isolate yourself from others. Come together. Fellowship with at least one or two or three people. You know, alone we cannot survive. We are not designed to survive alone. We are designed by God to be more courageous and receive courage and strength from others. Fellowship with at least one or two people. Talk your issues with others. You know, it is not possible to talk to everyone, but there are, you can connect with at least one or two who knows you, who can, who can understand you very well. And as you journey with them, I'm sure you will be able to Strengthen not only your life, but also strengthen many of us. Let's just worship our God and praise Him. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. so faithful who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every weakness take it to the Lord in prayer Lord we are so grateful to you grateful for that cross where we find mercy, peace, and grace in all moments of life. Let it be discouragements, Lord of God. But Lord, we just pray that even as we go through this discouraging moments and situations in our life, we will remember. We'll remember the cross. Remember, Lord, the mercy that you have shown for us on that cross. And we will remember who we are. We will not be, Lord, living a life of our preference, but we will be living a life of your preference and according to your design. And we will know that's not just about us. It's about you, Jesus. 
Make us a blessing for others. And Lord, that we will have a life that is focused on eternity. Bless your people. If there is anybody going through situations which they are battling with situation, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning your word will strengthen and help them. We give you praise and glory unto thy name. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Be glorified. Be glorified. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with every one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May the Lord continue to bless and strengthen you. And as I often say, take some time to spend with God's word. And meditate upon this word. Listen to what God is speaking to you. Perhaps you're not going through discouraging moments. It's all right. But you can be strengthened to strengthen others. To call up somebody that you know may be going through discouraging moments and grace them. God bless you. Please don't forget to fill that survey form. Today is the last day. And if you have not done that, I request you to kindly, kindly fill it and submit it today. Also remember the prayer times through Zoom in the morning and evening, morning 7.30 and evening 7.30. Please take time to come either in the morning or evening and be encouraged. There is so much of encouraging word God's people are giving every day. Just a few times and also for us to come together and pray for our city and our nation and for one another. Take your time to come and be blessed so that we can be a blessing for others. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, give you peace and grace. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord for this wonderful day the Lord has given to us to come together and worship him. This is a time for us to remember what the Lord has done for us. As we are going to partake from the Lord's table, we are going to remember the Lord Jesus has done for us on the cross. Let me read a scripture portion from the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 1 onwards. It says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. It says, we have been justified with God because of his perfect work on the cross. As a result of this, the benefit that we have received is we have peace with God and also the eternal hope that he has given to us. The hope that he has given to us, which is certain. In, in book of Romans chapter 6, verses 22, it says, Now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. You see, once we were slave to sin. Now today, we are slave to the righteousness. And all his word says that we are clothed with his righteousness. This is what we have received through his death on the cross. The book of Galatians chapter 3, it says that he has become a curse for us. He took the curse upon him and died for us on the cross. He has removed that curse from us. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, it says, By his wounds we are healed. So he has given a complete victory when he died on the cross for us. Through his broken body on the cross, we have entered into a new life. The blood that was shed for us on the cross, we have received the complete forgiveness of sin. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, and then 
he gave to the disciples after that he took the cup then he said this cup is a new covenant in my blood the disciples thought it's just another passover day where the master is breaking the bread and sharing from the cup but on that night jesus established a new covenant with his disciples what is that new covenant that your sins have been forgiven i will remember your sins no more this morning as we are going to party from lord's table this is what we are declaring he has given us a new life he has forgiven our sins when his blood that was shed for us on the cross he has given a new life he has also given a hope which is certain that our savior is going to come very soon so therefore this morning as we all together in our respective homes as we are going to party from this elements we are going to declare unto the lord lord jesus you have died for me on the cross and you took away all the sins the shame that was upon me and you have given me a new life so this is what we are declaring we are identifying with his death burial and resurrection as we going to partake from this lord's table and also we are declaring i have a hope in jesus christ my savior is going to come very soon therefore together let's partake from this elements shall we pray father we thank you lord for this blessed hope that you have given to us o oh lord we rejoice and we celebrate the victory that you have given to us thank you lord father this morning o oh lord we can together so your children we can declare o oh god that you have given us that life of oh god which is eternal thank you lord o oh lord i commit lord the bread and the cup and your hands o oh lord bless this element o oh lord father thank you in jesus name we pray on the night when he was betrayed he took the bread he gave thanks to the father and then he broke it he said this is my body which is broken for you in the same manner after the supper he took the cup he gave thanks to the father he said this cup is a new covenant in my blood do this in my remembrance let's together let's partake from this elements in our respective homes may i encourage the families to come together and to declare uh, his goodness in our life as we are going to fellowship from this elements let's partake from this elements take this time to thank the lord and also remember people around us in our families in our workplaces in our neighborhood there are many ready to come to the saving knowledge of christ church it's our responsibility to pray and intercede for each one of them shall we take this time to pray for all our dear ones Oh Lord we thank you Father Lord for the victory that you have given to us oh God Father victory over sin and death oh Lord thank you Lord Father Lord this morning we together as your children Lord Father we remember Lord our dear ones oh Lord our parents our siblings oh Lord our friends oh God Father there are many oh Lord Father who are still walking in the darkness this morning Lord I pray God that you may have mercy upon them O Lord Father send your word and touch them O Lord Father so that they may return to you O Lord Father I pray God let your word may Lord spread like a fire in the city in this nation Lord Father equip each one of us O God 
give us the boldness o lord to share your word of father we thank you lord father once again lord we together we give you glory honor and praise in jesus name we pray amen our savior is going to come very soon maranatha amen pray without ceasing nirantar prarthana kare as a church we have raised prayer in these days and we would like to specifically pray for you if you have a personal prayer request agar aap mein se kisi ko vyaktigat taur pe prarthna ki zarurat hai to hum aapke sath prarthna karna chahte hain you can see in the description box a link given or in the live chats the same link is available where you can just click on that put your name and number and your prayer request and click on the submit button and the prayer request will be made available to us aap us description box mein ya live chat mein ek link aap aapko mil jayega us link ko daba ke click kijiyega aur us form ko aap fill up kar dijiyega aapka naam number aur prarthna ka jo request hai aap usme bhar dijiyega aur submit button daba dijiyega ye prarthna ka jo request hai hamare paas aa jayega aur hum mein se koi आपको कॉल करेंगे और आपके साथ प्रार्थना में टाइम स्पेंड करेंगे वन ऑफ अस फ्रॉम आर चर्च फ्रॉम माई लीडर्स विल कॉल यू एंड विल बी विथ यू इन दिस प्रेयर इन दिस टाइम ऑफ प्रेयर गॉड ब्लेस यू गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई होप यूर ऑल डूइंग वेल टी सी एफ सी फैमिली मीट्स एवरी मॉर्निंग एट सेवन थर्टी एम एंड एवरी इवनिंग एट सेवन थर्टी पी एम फॉर एन आवर ऑफ इंटरसेशन एंड वर्शिप सो एन एप कॉल जूम On Tuesdays and on Thursdays we have extended worship sessions. We encourage you all to join with us in this time of prayer. For further information you can contact anyone from TCFC Church through WhatsApp or write to us through social media. Hope to see